Well, let's go to an email that we received from one of our listeners. This is from Lucas, and Lucas says, I was at a church that closed for several months during the COVID-19 mandates. I ended up leaving that church, but in hindsight, I think the pastors weren't faithful to their calling. Do you think that churches mishandled the state mandates, and should pastors who close their churches apologize for doing something wrong? Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, I mean, this is this is such a complex question, um, and there isn't an easy answer. I know that there are some people who are, who are going to tell you there there is a really easy answer, um, but the fact of the matter is th there isn't an easy answer. I, I will say, yeah, uh, there there were churches and pastors that mishandled this whole thing. And there were different ways of mishandling this whole thing. On the one side, I think one way of mishandling it is just to say, you know, who cares about what everyone else is saying? We're just going to do what we want to do, um, sort of shaking our fist at everyone else and um, and not being mindful uh, about the concerns, the real medical concerns, the real concerns within the congregation. That's not a way to sh shepherd people in your church. That's, that's one way, I think, of having mishandled this. And I think I think I think, yeah, I mean, if, if that really happened, if somebody went off the deep end in that way, then, then there's an issue. The other the other side of that is I, I did hear about um, churches and and pastors that really just sort of didn't do anything and were just sort of shut in and not actually engaged in ministry and shut shut the church down for, uh, uh, you know, I, I heard of some, I mean, even even you know, 12 months down the road, just not really engaged at all in any kind of ministry, almost a, a sort of excuse um, for not doing the work that God had called them to do. And that too, I think is, is heinous. I think that, I think that that's horrible. We need to understand, right? And I can say this as a pastor, uh, aware of his own shortcomings, um, but, but pastors are not, uh, um, Omnicompetent. They can't even, you know, say words that well. So, pastors are not omni. We don't know. We don't know everything. And especially, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, when everything was coming out, you're just you're just trying to field all of this information to understand what's happening. And so, I think that there needs to be and needed to be an immense amount of grace and understanding, recognizing that your you know your pastor is not. Uh, an epidemiologist, your pastor, you know, this is just not what we're what we're built for. We want to exegete the biblical text and proclaim God's word faithfully to people. Um, that's what we're called to. Uh, and yet, again, throughout throughout the process, I know that there were many people who felt like, okay, th you know, this 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 church or this pastor um, is just sort of setting everything aside, doesn't care about any of these these health and safety mandates, and and then on the other side people who were just saying, boy, uh, we just can't meet at all, and, and we just have to stay away from each other. It's heartbreaking, really. And I know that there are a lot of churches and pastors who are still, you know, there, there's this post-COVID hangover where people are just tired and exhausted. And there, there, there was, I think, out of this whole thing, a lot of suspicion that was created, even even in in uh, and with, within the church towards towards pastors, because it was like, okay, if you if you do this, then here's how I'm going to think about you. If you don't do this, then here's how I'm going to think about you. Um, let's be gracious where there have been, where there where there really was, you know, okay, the, drop the ball here very clearly. Um, you just, you just, you weren't even trying to find ways to gather together that were safe and good and helpful for the people of God to administer the Lord's Supper, so on and so forth. I think, I think that's an issue. I, I know for our church, um, Lucas, we were working really hard and around the clock to keep people safe, but also to find ways to continue to proclaim the gospel, to administer the, the, the means of grace. Um, there was a point early on in the pandemic where, at least in Southern California, where, where we're at in San Diego, um, you know, churches were, were closing down, but you could have these drive-in services. And so we rented a huge parking lot um, in San Diego, and I preached on top of a Jeep for several weeks. Uh, proclaiming the gospel and folks would just you know they drove it was like you're at the 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 drive-in you know I, I had an fm transmitter and i was preaching the gospel and we were doing the lord's supper in a parking lot frankly circumstantially it was it was rough it was not our normal worship service we didn't have the pews and the piano and all of those things uh but you know what we were we were proclaiming the gospel and people were being served and ministered to 
And it was a lot of work. It was hard. But I know that our, our people really appreciated it. And they appreciated the fact that we weren't just saying, well, who cares about, you know, what, what everybody is saying? We're just going to meet and, and that's what's going to happen. Well, I think that there's I think that there's a lack of wisdom there, too. And so probably here's what I would say. Probably, I think, in hindsight, every single pastor can look at that period and say, Lord, have mercy. Some probably need to say that more than others. Like, I need I need a lot more mercy, Lord. But all of us should say, Lord, have mercy. Help us, God, to have wisdom and to fulfill our calling, um, what you've called us to. Um, and not just to, to uh, sort of fall over um, or fall into a ditch one way or another. And again, I think that there were multiple ditches to fall into here. And so an encouragement for you is, again, realize that your pastor is not omnicompetent, that your pastor doesn't know everything, and your pastor certainly doesn't know the future. Um, and be gracious and sensitive and forgiving and have these conversations. If this is an area of, you know, boy, I'm, I'm really questioning my pastor now, Let's say sit down with them and have a conversation, and hopefully there can be some peace and restoration in that relationship. Thanks, and God bless.